Dear students, welcome to the lecture series. In this episode, I, Dr. Anita C, will talk about iodine. We all are familiar with iodized salt. You may be curious about why salt is iodized. What is its use? You may be curious to know whether any health disorders be prevented with the help of iodized salt. This lecture on iodine will illustrate a relationship between iodine and health disorders. How important is it to prevent iodine deficiency disorder? Let us start with introduction. Iodine, a non-metal, is found and functions in its ionic form. Hence, it is also referred to as iodide. Like iron, iodine has been coated in ancient Greek medicine. Iodine has been used as burnt sponges for treating human goiter as iodine is present in abundance in sponges. Use of salts of iodine to treat goiter is documented as early as 1820. Later, the element was discovered in thyroid gland in 1895. Iodine is an essential component of the thyroid hormone which is essential for growth and development. Two compounds, triiodothyroxine that is T3 and tetraiodothyronine that is T4 containing iodine secreted by thyroid hormone monitor the rate of energy metabolism in the body and thus are essential for growth and development objectives. After reading this episode, you will be able to learn about the distribution of iodine in the human body, understand the absorption and utilization, identify the food sources, describe the deficiency and toxicity of iodine. Let us start with biological role of iodine. Thyroid hormone has multiple functions as a regulator of cell activity and growth. Some of the functions are regulation of oxidation within the cells and helps in physical and mental growth. It is necessary for the functioning of the nervous and muscle tissue, circulatory activity and the metabolism of all nutrients. It promotes growth and maturation of peripheral tissues. It is involved in the metabolic energy flow of most of the cells of the body. Normal flow of hormone is required for postnatal growth in stretcher and bone maturation. It is also necessary for the functioning of basal metabolism. Now let us look at the distribution and absorption of iodine. Healthy human body contains 20 to 30 milligram of iodine of which one third is found in the thyroid gland where it is stored in the form of triiodothyroxine and tetrathyroxine. Free iodide appears in the blood. Iodide is distributed throughout the extracellular fluid. Minute traces are found in all cells of the body. Lesser amounts is found in ovaries, placenta, skin, salivary, gastric and memory glands. Absorption and utilization. The iodine contents of foods and of total diets differ appreciably and are influenced by geochemical so soil and cultural conditions which modify the iodine uptake of staple crops and foods of animal origin. It has been understood that cooking reduces the iodine content of food below the levels show that frying reduces the iodine content by 20%, grilling by 23% and boiling by as much as 58%. Iodine is ingested in foods as inorganic iodides and as organic compounds. 
iodine is easily absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract as inorganic iodine. Organic bond iodine is reduced to inorganic form after rapid absorption. The degree of absorption is dependent upon the level of circulating thyroid hormone and excess intake is controlled by renal excretion. Absorption is usually complete but may be delayed in protein energy malnutrition. Iodine is transported by the circulation as free iodide and as protein bound iodine. The pro law bond traction is sensitive to changes in the level of thyroid activity. It rises with pregnancy and falls with the hypofunctioning of the gland. Thyroid activity is controlled by the thyroid stimulating hormone secreted by the pituitary. When the blood level of the thyroid hormone is low, the activity of the thyroid is increased by thyroid stimulating hormone. By this action, the thyroid gland withdraws iodide from the circulation, concentrates its oxidases it to form diiodothyrosine and thyroxine. This iodine containing amino acids then become a part of the thyroglobulin complex. When thyroid hormone is utilized for cellular oxidation, iodine is released into the circulation. About one third of the released iodine is again incorporated into thyroid hormone and the remainder is excreted in urine. Excretion of iodine is primarily via urine. However, small amounts appear in feces along with biliary secretion. Let us identify some of the food sources of iodine. As told, the iodine content of foods are influenced by geochemical, soil and cultural conditions which modify the iodine uptake of staple crops and foods of animal origin. Studies have evidence that cooking reduces the iodine content of food below the levels. The most important source of iodine in the dietary is iodized salt. One gram of iodized salt contains about 76 milligram iodine. Salt water fish and shellfish contain good amount of iodine. Vegetables grown in iodine rich soils near the sea coast are good source of iodine. Those grown on iodine poor soils generally contain little iodine. Students let us learn about iodine deficiency disorders. Deficiency. Iodine deficiency depletes thyroid iodine stores and reduces daily production of T4. A fall in the blood level of T4 triggers the secretion of increased amounts of TSH which increases thyroid activity with consequent hyperplasia of the thyroid. Iodine deficiency is frequently associated with mountain areas and of frequent flooding and erosion and can also occur in inland area. This important factor is environmental iodine deficiency which accounts for the endemicity in most of the areas. The food crops grown on such areas will naturally be deficit in iodine and consumption of such food will run the risk of developing iodine deficiency disorder. The other factor responsible for iodine deficiency disorder is goitrogens in food. Certain chemical substances like thiocyanates, disulfides, phenols, phytates, biphenyls, lithium, etc. found in food or environment are referred to as goitrogens. Food such as tubers, vegetables like tapioca, cabbage, and cauliflower contains these goitrogens. Certain cereals and millets like sorghum, finger millet, mustard, 
and ground nuts contain fair amount these goitrogens inhibits uptake of iodine and thyroid gland resulting in iodine deficiency disorder iodine deficiency disorder can be seen in all age groups depending upon the stage of development iodine deficiency leads to variety of disorders iodine deficient mother during pregnancy can affect the fetus abortion is the preliminary stage stillbirths congenital anomalies increased perinatal mortality increased infant mortality neurological crinism mixed edematous crinism and psychomotor defects are the disorders seen in fetal stage in neonatal stage neonatal goiter and neonatal chemical hypothyroidism goiter juvenile hypothyroidism impaired mental function and retarded physical development are some of the features in children and adolescent adults suffer from goiter with its complications hypothyroidism and impaired mental functions iron deficiency impairs the production of thyroxine and causes skin changes enlargement of the tongue hoarsening of the voice slowness of movement delayed reflex relaxation time elevated plasma lipid cardiac insufficiency fluid accumulation in the cavities and increased sensitivity to drugs lack of iodine leads to an increase in the size and number of epithelial cells in the thyroid gland and thus enlargement of the gland this condition is called endemic goiter and is more prevalent in females than in males and is more frequent during adolescent and pregnancy the most important reason for stressing iodine as a preventive measure is not the goiter itself but the crinism which affects the infants when the pregnant women is severely deficient in iodine crinism is characterized by a low basal metabolism muscular flabbiness and weakness dry skin enlarged tongue thick lips arrest of skeletal growth and severe mental retardation fetal and neonatal iodine deficiency studies have documented that there is a relationship between the level of maternal thyroxine and the outcome of current and recent pregnancies including mortality and the occurrence of crinism a study reported that the rate of perinatal deaths among mothers with very low serum concentration of total thyroxine was 36.0% as compared with 16.4% in other women with levels more than 25 grams per ml thus indicating the importance of maternal thyroid function in fetal survival and development an increased perinatal mortality due to iodine deficiency has been found in neonatal born to pregnant women who were treated for iodine deficiency in the second and third trimester in the treated group there was a substantial fall in perinatal and infant mortality together with an increase in birth weight apart from its influence on mortality the importance of the state of thyroid function in the neonate relates to the fact that at birth the brain of the human infant has only reached about 1/3 of its size and continues to grow rapidly until the end of the second year as we know the fact that the thyroid hormone which depends on an adequate supply of iodine is essential for normal brain development data has confirmed the continuing presence of severe iodine deficiency affecting neonatal thyroid function resulting in constituting threat to early brain development their observation showed that hypothyroidism persists in infant and childhood if the deficiency is not corrected and retardation of physical and mental development results
these informations indicate a much greater risk of mental defects in severely iron deficient populations than is indicated merely by the presence of classical ironism for how it all in his findings demonstrated depressed cognitive and motor performance in 10 to 15 year old children born to women known to be developed iron deficiency during pregnancy he also illustrated both the long term consequences of a low iron status during fetal development and the fact that they need not be accompanied by concurrent overt signs of deficiency in the child thus iron deficiency in the fetus is the result of iron deficiency in the mother the condition is associated with an increased incidence of stillbirths abortions on congenital abnormalities a major effect of fetal iron deficiency is endemic rentism which is quite distinct from the sporadic form in its most common form it is characterized by mental retardation deaf mutism squint and spastic diplegia this is referred to as nervous or neurological rentism spastic rigidity can affect the lower limbs which may lead to charactered gait and brisk reflexes this contrast with the less common mixed hemorrhages however there is considerable variation in the clinical manifestations of neurological criticism including isolated deaf mutism and mental defects of varying degrees mixed hemorrhages is characterized by hypothyroidism and dwarfness the signs of hypothyroidism are coarse and dry skin swollen tongue deep harsh voice apathy followed by mental deficiency it is also associated with skeletal growth retardation weak abdominal muscles sluggish bowel functions and delayed tendon reflexes iron deficiency in children studies evidence that goiter rate in school children over the age 6 to 12 years provide a convenient indicator of the presence of iron deficiency in a community iron deficiency in children is characteristically associated with goiter juvenile hypothyroidism impaired mental function and retarded physical development the goiter rate increases with age reaching a maximum at adolescent girls have a higher prevalence than boys studies have indicated in school children with iron deficient short impaired school performance and iq as compared with match groups from non iron deficient areas they also exhibit poor motor coordination high degree of apathy reflected in lack of initiative and decision making capacity iron deficiency in adults in adults iron deficiency results in goiter with complications hypothyroidism and impaired mental functions the thyroid gland in its effort to produce the required thyroxin during dietary deficiency of iodine swells up leading to enlargement of thyroid gland and this condition is known as goiter iodine administration in the form of iodized salt bread or oil has been demonstrated to be effective in the prevention of goiter in adults the findings also provide an explanation of sub optimal brain function in subjects with endemic goiter and lowered serum t4 levels however we should know that the relationship between t and t3 are influenced by the fact that selenium is a component of at least one of the enzymes mediating this conversion thus a fall in selenium status reduces t3 synthesis and may increase the adverse consequences of iodine deficiency to conclude we can say that iodine deficiency is a major obstacle of the human and social development of communities living in a iodine deficient environment 
correction of iodine deficiency is thus a major contribution of development. What happens if iodine is consumed in excess of what is required? Students, we shall now understand the toxic effects of iodine. Toxicity and hyperthyroidism. High dietary iodine may however induce hypothyroidism in autoimmune thyroid disease and may inhibit the effects of thioamide drugs. Excess iodine has symptoms similar to those of iodine deficiency. Commonly encountered symptoms are abnormal growth of thyroid gland and disorders in functioning and growth of organism. Excess iodine promotes the formation of organic iodine without inhibiting the capacity to release iodine in response to physiological demand. A larger excess which can inhibit iodine release from the thyrotoxic human thyroid or form thyroids in which iodine release has been accelerated by TSH. Toxicity can inhibit organic iodine formation and cause iodide goiter also called as wolf chekhov effect. Very high levels of iodide saturate the active transport mechanism. Now let us sum up this episode. Iodine is an essential constituent of thyroid hormones thyroxine. The major role of iodine in nutrition arises from the important part played by the thyroid hormones in the growth and development of humans and animals. The effects of iodine deficiency on growth and development are now denoted by the term iodine deficiency disorders. These effects are seen at all stages of development and particularly in the fetus, the neonate and the infant that is in the period of rapid growth. Fetal survival and development are both sensitive to iodine deficiency. Brain development in the fetus and neonate is particularly affected. The effects forming a continuous and increasing in proportion of the severity of the iodine deficiency. They result from the influence of a low maternal thyroxine level on the fetus and are associated with levels of intake of iodine less than 25% of normal. Levels less than 50% of normal are associated with goiter. Data indicating that goitrous children have a poorer school performance than non-goitrous children have been reported. All these effects are fully preventable if the iodine deficiency is corrected before pregnancy. The term goiter has been used for many years to describe the effect of iodine deficiency. The clinical effects of an excessive iodine intake also include endemic goiter and hypothyroidism. Thank you students. Hope you have understood uh, with the iodine. Thank you. One